Some people think that longer sessions are better than shorter sessions, and that the longer time you spend in the chamber, the better it is. Well, that's not necessarily true, and we're gonna talk about the difference between frequency and duration in this video. As we discuss frequency and duration, I wanna set a stage of thought first and say this, and this is obviously an extreme example, but overall, if let's say somebody was gonna do six hours a week of hyperbaric, and they came in on Saturday and did one six hour session versus they came Monday, Wednesday, Friday, so three days a week, and they did two hour sessions three days a week. Or if they came in Monday through Saturday and did 60 minutes six days a week, I wanna frame this whole conversation by saying, even though over the course of the week, they all got six hours of treatment, I would argue that it's exceptionally more beneficial for the person who came in six days a week for one hour than three days a week for two hours and certainly more effective than once a week for six hours. So as a general statement, I do wanna say that overall, frequency does trump duration. Going in and out of the chamber more often seems to have a bigger effect than the total amount of time someone spends in the chamber. That being said, there are certain mechanisms that are stimulated by quantity of oxygen. Then there are certain mechanisms of hyperbaric that are stimulated because of frequency. And we'll talk a little bit more about each of those categories. So as we're developing a protocol for hyperbaric oxygen, we have to consider the total pressure somebody's being exposed, the percentage of oxygen that they're breathing, and then time. And within the time category, there's the frequency of session. How often should we be doing these sessions? and the duration of those sessions, how long are those sessions supposed to be? 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes, two hours, et cetera. And today I wanna to discuss primarily the differences between frequency and duration from that standpoint, not as much the pressure and percentage of oxygen side of that equation. And so as we explore the idea of frequency and duration, it's important to say this, once upon a time in hyperbaric oxygen, let's say for the last 40 or 50 years, up until probably the last four or five years, the concept of hyperbaric oxygen has been how much oxygen can we actually get into this person? And if that were all that we care about, and I'll tell you right now that that's not all that we care about, but if it were all that we cared about, what we would do is we would multiply atmospheric pressure times the percentage of oxygen times the number of minutes and the duration and frequency of the session. And with that calculation, we could effectively create a dose of oxygen that this person received. Now, there are certain benefits of hyperbaric that do include the specific dose of hyperbaric oxygen. Goals like increased mitochondrial efficiency or increased immune function, or even in some cases, reduced inflammation, these few things are absolutely affected by the total dosage of oxygen, as well as a few others. And lastly, maximizing the oxidative component of the therapy, which in some cases, maximizing the oxidation is one of the benefits. You can see other videos we've done on oxidation to understand that better. So if we're talking about mitochondrial function, immune function, inflammatory results, and oxidation, the total amount of oxygen that we get into somebody's body is a very meaningful conversation. And so in those cases, the total dose of oxygen is important. And so more frequent sessions, longer sessions are absolutely a part of that equation. On the other hand, there's a whole series of other benefits of hyperbaric, including things like growth factors and stem cells and angiogenesis or new blood vessel growth neurogenesis, mitogenesis, so improvement and healing of neurons, and the growth and replication of mitochondria. Those don't seem to alone be affected by the total dose of oxygen, but in addition, those are also affected by what we've talked about in the past, which is the hyperoxia, hypoxia effect of hyperbaric, either coming in and out of a chamber regularly or taking air breaks while you're in the chamber. And so those aren't affected by the total accumulation of oxygen, those are affected by increasing the oxygen levels of the body and then letting them decrease and increasing the oxygen and decreasing. And so that wave of oxygen seems to be what stimulates those. And so ultimately, when we have this frequency and duration conversation, the real first question to ask is, which mechanism are we really trying to elicit? Are we trying to stimulate the high-dose oxygen benefits of hyperbaric? 
Or are we trying to stimulate the hyperoxic hypoxic mechanisms of hyperbaric? And then we can start developing our protocol from there. So again, overall, frequency does trump duration. I would rather do shorter visits more frequently overall than longer visits less frequently. However, we still also have to consider what are the main mechanisms we are trying to stimulate through the course of care with the hyperbaric chamber. In addition to this, there are other factors to consider when developing protocols for clients coming in for hyperbaric care, but I hope this at least answers some thought around the frequency versus duration conversation, and we'll see you next time. Whether you're a chiropractor or a naturopath or an acupuncturist or a DO or even an MD, but you're looking at hyperbarics through this lens, the lens that I'm describing, which is applying hyperbarics for all these off-label conditions, this is the class that teaches that. And right now it's the only class that teaches this type of hyperbarics in this way and that's an actual certification course. Check out hbotusa.com and uh, right across the, the top you'll see upcoming events. You can click on that and it'll show you uh, when our next courses are gonna be.